Recently, I was bored, so like a politician, I spent money I didn't have and picked up an RTX 4070 Ti. In today's video, we'll review it, evaluating it on a few common projects and comparing it to a couple older cards. Let's start with Kapow, or specifically Neoxa. As we move through the projects, I'll take a moment to share what overclocks are being used. Neoxa is a project I have interest in, but I really don't like the Kapow algorithm. After a few minutes, we can see that the 4070 Ti is crunching away at a bit over 32 mega hashes, using approximately 180 watts in power, allowing for an efficiency of 0.17. Now, I'll jump over to the previous generation, the 3070 Ti. We're reminded of its performance of 37 mega hashes. While I did not know what to expect, I was rather amused that Nvidia's new card was not producing as much. However, I believe the 4070 Ti is more efficient. I have not done a comparison at the wall, but a quick glance at the in software numbers implies such. If you know more specifically, make sure to comment below. Nonetheless, I'm thinking the 4070 Ti is better suited elsewhere. Before I forget, let me draw your attention to the GPU description. It's being identified as unknown. This is due to Rave OS not yet being updated. I expect a future update to the software will address this though. Let's move on to Flux. Is this a good fit for the RTX 4070 Ti? Locking the core at 2200 allows the card to run more efficiently, achieving approximately 89 solutions with Lull Miner. This is a good number to see, along with a power draw of 173. This allows for an efficiency of 0.51. Compared to the 3070 Ti's 74 solutions, I can appreciate the improvement the card offers. When it comes to Flux, I'm also curious about what Mini Z Miner can do. Let's take a look. While using the same overclocks as before, Mini Z is achieving a bit more productivity at 94 solutions while pulling nearly the same amount of power, delivering a slightly better efficiency of 0.53. In my opinion, I do think Flux is a viable project for the 4070 Ti. I also want to note that if you increase your core clock, you can achieve over 100 solutions, but at the cost of a higher energy draw. Moving along, we'll next look at Caspa on the 4070 Ti. Let's start with a more efficient setup. I've locked the core clock in software at 2200, along with these other settings. After a bit, the miner is up and running and we're getting 1000 mega hashes or one giga hash while pulling 135 watts from the wall. An efficiency of 7.41. For those that want to get a bit more out of the card, we can bump the core clock to 2500. This will deliver 1.14 giga hash at 155 watts, lending to a slightly lower efficiency. If you have interest in supporting CASPA, the 4070 Ti is very well suited. The delivered performance with Flux and CASPA were the main reasons that I showed interest in making this investment. The bear market has made me think more about card density within my farm. I've spoken to this in previous videos, and it will be a topic I often refer to simply because I am at the point where I want to produce more hash power with fewer GPUs. I originally started mining a couple years ago, investing in anything that could be found. This led to me acquiring a number of 1660 supers, and for mining Ethereum, they were a valid choice. Unfortunately, that time is behind us, as we become more familiar with perhaps better projects that lie ahead. Using Flux as an example, it takes approximately four 1660 supers to produce the same yield as one 4070 Ti, while using much more power. 
I do think as we all begin to prepare for the next bull market, it really doesn't make sense to keep running so many of the older cards. Let's tackle one more project, Ergo. We'll start by looking at the previous generation, the 3070 Ti. The card delivers a respectable 176 mega hashes. And using the same overclocks, we'll jump over to the 4070 Ti. Unfortunately, I'm only getting 136 mega hashes. And this is very disappointing. It's almost as if something is not working correctly in the software. I'll plead ignorant though. How the actual miners work is beyond me. Even when putting in the overclocks of the 4080, the card does not perform any different. The only good comment is the efficiency is no worse than the previous generation. Next, let's take a brief look comparing the 4070 Ti to the 3070 Ti, the 3070, and the 2060 Super, a favor of mine from the 2000 series. The chart gives us an idea on each card's strengths and weaknesses. Just for fun, let's throw in the older 1660 Super. I'm not saying that the 1660 Super is a bad card. It does have its own list of strengths, but I am suggesting that as new technology is coming to the market, it's only rational to consider card replacement. I'll start to wrap up the video. Is the RTX 4070 for everyone? I think the clear answer to that question is no. However, if one is looking to support Flux or Caspa, the card is a good consideration. Is the RTX 4070 Ti a good value? It's a fair question, and it's one that I like to answer by looking at the productivity versus the dollar cost. Looking at Flux, the 4070 Ti breaks down to $9.21 per solution. The RTX 3070 Ti had come in at $8.10. In this case, the new card falls short, but change the narrative and look at Caspa. The 4070 Ti's 82 cents per mega hash looks pretty good compared to the 3070 Ti's $1.11. I suppose each of us will have to answer the question for ourselves. What do you think? Leave your thoughts below. If you've made it this far in the video, I say thank you, and I hope that it was to some degree informative. The hit on the like button is always appreciated, and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.